welcome to Grace Life Church Podcast. If you would like any more information about us, please visit our website, gracelife.com.au. It is my pleasure to speak to you today on the book of Mark, the third chapter. So I'm just going to start straight away. And uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, we're going to look at Mark chapter 3. Um, and uh, I'm just going to pull out some snippets there uh, that I believe God is how he has spoken to me. And uh, I trust that he will speak to you. Uh, as you know, in the book of Mark, uh, what's been happening is that Jesus has been, um, uh, has been ministering. And uh, if you notice that what's happening is that everywhere he goes, he seems to have opposition. And we're going to continue on looking at some of the opposition that Jesus encountered as he went about his father's work. Mark chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, 4. Another time, Jesus went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, which is, which is lawful? Which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, or to save life or kill. But they remain silent. They remain silent. Thank you, Lord. Father, this is your word. Give us ears to hear. Give us a mind to conceive. And we bless you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So what was happening here? The leaders, the leaders of that time were coming and challenging Jesus. They didn't recognize him But they were jealous, they were, sorry, they were jealous of what Jesus was doing. These are the leaders at that time. These are the ones who were supposed to be pointing people to God. But instead, they were jealous of what Jesus was doing. They were jealous and they they had a position in the community. And when Jesus appeared to start to speak with authority, they became jealous. I want to tell you today, I love this church. What I really like about it being on the leadership team is that when we start those leadership teams, the first thing that Josh and Scott and and all the elders will do is that, what is God saying? What is God saying? And we spend time trying to discern what is God saying to this church. But you see, at that time, the the leaders of that time challenged the work of God because of man nature, their nature. Their nature was to be in control. And you know, I have been in many situations along my journey where I have been in leadership positions for a very long time in different places. And what I discover is that in leaders, um, leaders... And, and, and people in the church. What begins to happen is that if we take our eyes off God, then we will, begin to, we will move in a direction that is away from God. You will hear sometimes that God says that we have a nature. That nature is described in the book of Galatians in chapter 5. There are two natures. There's a spirit man And there's the flesh. And then in the middle, we have a choice. We have a will. We can decide which way. 
which direction, which decision. You see, these leaders had lost their way. They began to challenge the, the, the man of God from doing the work of his father. We as believers, we're going to be challenged. We're going to be questioned. We may even face hostility sometimes. The first thing I'd like for us to take away is that the Pharisees lost sight of their goal. They were supposed to be showing people the way to God. In the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, it says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought that, uh, uh, to make it obedient to Christ. Now, what are those arguments? Those arguments are the things that I learned or didn't learn that I was confronted with at university. And sometimes when I go out to workshops and networks and things like that, I get confronted with philosophies that are not of God. The arguments are the philosophies, the reasons, the schemes of the world. The pretensions have to do with any proud man-centered and self-confidence. You see, God wants us to bring our minds in line with his mind so that we don't drift to something that is different from God. Because what I focus on, I will move in that direction. And I have experienced that. Sometimes it's very hard to, to share things personal. But I want to share one time, at the very beginning of my life, I had a very powerful conversion experience. I felt like I went to heaven. I felt like I was with God for about three or four weeks. And then I came back down to earth. And then three months later, a man hit my father. My father fell and he passed away. And I had just come out of a war where there's all kinds of crazy things happening. And I remember sitting in a living room and I had two visions in front of me. One vision was to take revenge to go and get this guy and do some terrible things to him. The other vision was over here. I saw Jesus. I saw the nail prints in his hands. I saw the crown he was wearing. I was able to see the scars on his back. And then I would drift back over here. In myself, I just wanted to get revenge. But then I found myself, I had to make a decision. I had to come to a sense that my mind, I had to focus here, because if I focused here, I probably would be in prison. I wouldn't be here today. You see, that's what God, that's the potential. God wants to bring, demolish every argument Every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought. The Pharisees lost sight of their goal. In Mark chapter 7, you're probably reading that. It talks about Jesus withdrew from his disciples to the lake. A large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard about all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, and the region across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep people from crowding him. For he had healed many so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Wow. What did Jesus carry? The first thing I want to say is, when Karen was going to introduce me this morning, when she did, 
the thing I, I just want to say in my head, I am just an ordinary person. We're just ordinary people. Jesus' disciples were ordinary people. And over a period of time, they began to understand who they were and what they carried. I thank God that many years ago, I was put in a position. I have lots, I have credentials, I'll tell you that now. I have some credentials. But I was put in a position where I couldn't depend on those credentials. And I couldn't even depend on anything else except God. Did you know that sometimes God will lead us into a place and create a set of circumstances as such that you can't depend on anything. Nothing will work except God. We were talking to Pastor Gabriel and his wife last Sunday. And we were talking about, well, why in these third world countries that people are getting healed? People are, are, are being set free. Pastor Matunda talks about, well, how do you get on with talking about uh, uh, setting people free of demonic activity. How do you get on with that in the Western world? We don't. We skirt around it. So the pastor said, what happens in those countries is that they don't have anything to rely on like we do when we get sick. The first thing we do, I'm not saying I go to the doctors, I'll go to the hospital if I need to, but I have a backup. And so in the third world countries, they don't have a backup. They only have God. They only have God. If, and sometimes what God will do is he will lead us into a situation where we have no other choice but to depend on God. And I believe there's a time coming well, God will start to challenge us because in this country, in a Western country, we have so much. We have so much backup. Some of us will have a bank account. We have a car. We went to Africa a few years ago. We saw people didn't have cars. They would run to where they needed to go. We went into houses where people didn't have a toothbrush, and they lived in a little space, a whole family. And their biggest problem was how to get food for that particular day. We have so much. So what is God going to do? I believe God will bring us to a place, or he will lead us individually into situations where we, we have no other choice but to depend on him. I have a son, and uh, he, he, he drives around behind the bus, when the, you know, the, the, trans, the, the big buses. as a little car, and there's two guys usually in that car. And... Um, it looks pretty cruisy if you just look out there, just driving around <laughs> behind the bus. But we go out to lunch, and he'll tell me stories. And um, we were out to lunch the other day, and he was telling me about a situation where on the bus, um, what happens is the driver will call to say, we got a situation. So they have to get out of the car, go on the bus, and sort the situation out. So he started to tell me about this um, there was about seven, seven guys on this bus, and one had acted up. And so he had to go, and he called it lockdown, lockdown this guy. Now he's a, he said, Dad, you gotta be a, you got you to gotta have a presence. You got you to gotta be able to just be there, present. And, and you got to know what to do with the stuff that's on you. I said, oh, good, okay. So he started, as he locked this one guy down, he said there were seven guys started to go behind him. And I said, oh, and he just kind of was going to leave it. He wasn't going to tell me what else was going to happen. So I'm going, well, what happened? Just tell me what happened. And he said, oh, oh, yes. He said, as they started to move behind me, because I'm thinking they're going to come up behind him and punch him or something. So he said, oh, no, 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 no problem. I said, what did you do? He said, I just put my hand on a pepper spray, and they backed off, all seven. You see, he knew what he was carrying. I'm going to tell you this morning, I'm not going to skirt around that we have the capacity to drive our demons. I was going to skirt around that. 
but I'm not. I'll just gently put it to you. I used to be called the local exorcist. God led me into that. And I'm going to tell you that I have had people in front of me as we're ministering to this person. And people in front of me trying to get up out of a chair to get up and punch me out. I have seen this person restrained by something I could not see. And then I just carried on and I saw the authority that I had in God to set this young man free. And when he was set free, I have seen people set free and move forward and go to China, do things in God that I, it just blows my mind. And it sounded like the enemy knew the potential of that person. Do we know what we carry? Do we know what we carry? It says in Matthew chapter 3, if, uh, sorry, in John chapter 14, it, it was around verses 15 and 7, Jesus was talking to his disciples before he went away. And we read about this earlier. And he was saying that when I go away, I'm going to send you something. He says, when I go away, I'm going to send you a comforter, an advocate, a helper, a counselor. And where will he be? He will be inside of us. That is why God will never leave us, because he's in there. He would never leave us. He would never forsake us, because where we go, we carry him. And, wherever, and how we think, we can release him. We can release the authority to cast out demons, to deal with the unseen world. Scott and I were talking the other day. We want to reach Allenbrook. Allenbrook. You see, the Great Commission says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. First in Jerusalem. First in Jerusalem. Then Samaria. And then the other parts of the world. But first, Jerusalem. And where's Jerusalem for Allenbrook? For Grace Life? It's there. Just out there. That's the Jerusalem. And what's in, what's in Jerusalem? I'm going to tell you what's in Jerusalem. This is Scott. We're chatting. Social media. You may have seen this. There are people in that community who want someone to come and cleanse their house of bad spirits. Who can do that? No one else except the, the people of God can only cleanse that house. And yet, there's a cry. Talk to Scott. That's what he shared with me. So when we start to go into Jerusalem, what we're going to encounter are the things that you read about, uh, sorry, that you hear about on the news. We hear about Ukraine. We hear about Taiwan and China and the war games. But do you know that out there, there are people that are just going off the cliff? It's like a sniper. And the sniper is actually pulling the trigger, knocking people off in Jerusalem, in Allenbrook, because they don't know the good news. Now, what is God going to do? How is he going to use us to reach that? I don't quite know yet. But I believe God is working on me my thoughts, my being, to be able to go into Jerusalem, to go into Jerusalem. You say, what we carry? We carry the belt of truth. We carry the shoes of the gospel of peace. We carry the breastplate of righteousness. We carry the helmet of salvation. We carry the sword of the Spirit. 
And so when we, God speaks to us and say, go into Jerusalem, we are armed and ready to stand. And no weapon formed against us will prosper. God is going to build his church and the gates of hell are not going to stand against it. He is going to go into Jerusalem. He's going to go into uttermost parts of the world. And he is going to bring people to him. We have what we carry. We carry authority. We carry the ability to heal. We carry the ability to cast out demons. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 28, and this is a story where Jesus again ministering. Matthew chapter 8, verse 28 verse to 34. When he arrived at the other side of the region of, of uh, Gar 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 Gardarnes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass there that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? You see, Jesus had come to this place. Now here he is, he's going out. He's just doing, he's showing us what he wants us to do. So he comes to this place. And here are these two demon-possessed men. And what had happened was that the, um, the, the, the demons asked Jesus, send us to the pigs. And if you remember the pigs, the demons went into the pigs, the pigs went off the cliff. What is he trying to show us there? That those things are destructive. They come to kill, to steal, and destroy. But Jesus has come to give life and give it to the fullest. The owners of the pigs went back to the town and the people came from the town and they told Jesus, depart from this region. They didn't get it. They did not get it. You see, what had happened was that uh, <clears throat> They didn't understand. And, and that's why sometimes we, we will skirt around that issue because it is hard to understand. And the enemy does not want us to get it. He does not want us to get it. So we skirt around it. And I was toying up whether to skirt around that this morning. But I felt that God's saying, come on, let people know what they carry. Let people know what they carry. You see, when Paul was in Corinth, he was talking to Christians, and he said to him then that I can't talk to you as spiritual, but as carnal. And that's why we have to skirt around things like this. That's why we have to skirt around things that happen in the unseen world. Do we know what we carry? Do we know the authority we have in Jesus? We have the authority to cast out demons. In Mark chapter 3, verses 20 to, 20 to 22, Jesus entered a house and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were even, weren't even, were not even able to eat. When his family heard about it, this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, he is out of his mind. He's crazy. Did you know, when you start operating in the authority of Christ, when you begin to understand what you carry, your families who are outside of Christ will say you're crazy. You don't know what you're doing. And then if you go out in public and start to talk the way I'm talking now, please don't ask me to leave the church, okay? <laughs> start to talk about these kind of things and don't skirt around them. People will just, it's a nice day today, isn't it? Yep. We just can't talk about things like that. And that's okay. Because God is working. 
God is moving in our lives in such a way that we will be able to one day fully align with God. Now, as we close, because I can see that clock back there, I was just thinking about Moses. What we carry, the authority we have in Christ. And as you remember, Moses, God was speaking to Moses. God wanted Moses to go into Egypt to set his people free. And Moses came up with so many excuses. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 1, he had unbelief. Exodus chapter 4, verse 10, he said, I don't speak well enough. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 13, I'm not worthy. Exodus chapter 5, verse 21 and 22. He felt that he made it worse when he went into Israel because the Pharaoh got hard on the people and he said, ah, oh, this, this is not working. So he had all kinds of excuses. Every excuse he made, God began to talk to him and one of the things that he said, if you remember, he says, what's in your hand? What is in your hand? And then he told, God told Moses to throw it down. Throw it down. And it changed into a snake. And Moses jumped back. What's in your hand? Did you know that every single person in this room has something in their hands? Moses, uh, God told Moses to throw it down. And Moses threw it down. What I want to say this morning is that we have something that God has given us. I believe to lead a nation to deliverance. You see, Moses took what he had been used to in life. He took it. God used it, and he went into Egypt. And he not only led people out of Egypt going to, to the promised land, but that staff was used to sustain the journey. He had something in his hand that God used. I want to tell you what I see in this church. It's interesting. We covered some of this before back in uh, over some of the studies. This is what I see in the church. I see people in this, in this room who have insight. That's the eyes of Christ. You have insight. Prophecy. The other thing I see in this room when I walk in, I see people doing things. Service. That's the hands of Christ. There's people up here on the pulpit. There's people running life group. There's people running Bible studies. That's teaching. That's the mind of Christ. We just saw giving. Where did that money come from? I don't see any millionaires out there. Where did that money come from? Giving. That's the arms of Christ. I see that. Before you leave today, someone's going to come up and encourage you. Give you a pat on the back. I see people in this room that can do that. And are doing it. I see people organizing before the service. Administration, that's the head of Christ. And then I see people who have just mercy. That's the heart of Christ. You see, just as God 
instructed Moses and touched what was in Moses' hands, he led a nation. He led a nation. I believe in the days to come, I can't see how God is going to just let us come to a Sunday morning service and then go and then come back on a Sunday and then go and then come back. Because what's happening in the world, around the world, if you just look it up, church attendance is dropping. Church attendance is dropping. The church as we know it, the attendance is dropping. But there's something else happening in Jerusalem. There's something else happening in Afghanistan. There's something else happening in China. There's something else happening in the world, and that is the church of Jesus Christ is growing and getting stronger and stronger. It's a matter of time before the church in Australia, the church attendance will drop to a point where the crowds will start to come to the door because of what we have discovered and how what we carry. We have the ability to heal as it does in the third, as it happens in the third countries. We have the ability to drive out demons because of what the authority we have in Christ. We have the ability to do the will of God. We have the ability to go into Jerusalem and lead Jerusalem to the promised land. We have the ability to go out there and cleanse the houses that people are asking to come and, and want that their houses clean. And when we start to move into the will of God through the authority of Jesus Christ, what will happen? The crowds will come. The crowds will come. I am telling you, with the world the way it is, how long before God begins to show us, to show us in the Western world how church is done. I can see in this building, we've gone into Jerusalem. We've become aware of what we carry. We've become aware of the authority we have in Christ. I can almost see the crowds coming, and I have seen this, and in closed school once. And in this school, I heard God say that if you don't do something, all these kids are going to go to hell. And so I started an inner school Christian fellowship. For four weeks, I went to the room. No one came. The next time a young student came in, she had been uh, affected by one of the witches in that school. And she came in, and that's where I discovered all the credentials I have couldn't touch that. I had to go to the authority I had in Christ. I had to become aware of what I carried. And what happened, to cut a very long story short, that young girl became a Christian. Then her parents became a Christian. Teachers became Christians. So much so that the room we met in exploded. The whole school was turned upside down. Teachers became Christians. Parents became Christians. Students became Christians because they had seen how this person was before and this person would come into the classroom, what happened to that person? That person was tra transformed. And what began to happen is that school was turned upside down by the power of God. That's what we have to look forward to. I've never forgotten that. Then God said, what's in your hands? He put all to one there. If God can do it in that school, he can do it in this country. And the vision is to go across country, the country with all to one. And I believe God can turn Australia upside down, just like he did with that school. Because there's awareness of what we carry and the authority we move in, in Jesus Christ.
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We hope you've enjoyed listening to this podcast from Grace Life Church. For more information about us or any of our services, please visit our website at gracelife.com.au.